Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harry Wolf and I teach you about coding and the world at large. Today's installment, we'll be talking about ES2020. What is that you might be asking yourself? Well, luckily I have an answer. ES2020 is the next version of JavaScript that's set to be approved very shortly this year. In this new ES2020, there is a whole new host of functionality that's being included, most of which you can already use today. But having it be approved as part of the ECMAScript standard means that it becomes officially part of JavaScript itself. So today we're going to delve into each one of these new features and tell you about what they mean and why you should be excited about them. Here is the official announcement that the ES2020 candidate is ready for the ECMA GA to approve it. The chance of that changing is pretty small, so I'm just going to assume that everything that we're going to be talking about today will be included in ES2020 when it's actually finally approved. Um, a great way to actually kind of see these upcoming proposals, these, a proposal to change and expand the JavaScript language itself is this uh, TC39 uh, proposals page that's on GitHub. You can see a list of proposals. There's four stages, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Four is considered a finished proposal, and only finished proposal can actually be included in a publication year. So you actually scroll all the way down here to see all the proposals down here that are going to be included in 2020. Now, as I said before, this is an awesome website. It's a uh, Kangex's compatibility table. And it lets you actually see the JavaScript functionality on the left-hand side here, and then in which environments that it is supported. So for our use case, we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here to see the 2020 features. And you can see I've already clicked on all of them to prepare for this video. Um, in the current browser that I'm in right now, the latest version of Chrome, all these new features are already supported. So I can actually use all these features without a transpiler and it will work by itself in Chrome today. Um, if you're using Babel 7 with CoreJS 3, all of them are supported as well, except for Big Int, and we'll get to that. We'll get to why that is when we get to Big Int, but you can kind of scroll horizontally here to see uh, the latest version of Firefox supports all the new 2020 features. Uh, Chrome for the past three versions has supported all the new 2020 features. Uh, Safari supports everything except for Big Int as well. So you can start using these things today except for Big Int if you don't have Chrome available. So shall we get started with the first proposal? It is string.prototype.matchall. Now, I'll be honest with you, because I think honesty is important, right? A trust, a bond between you and me. I didn't really understand the importance of this when I started this video. I don't know everything. I just get to prepare before I record these videos and pretend as if I do. The magic of video and cinema. The short version for what match all adds as functionality to JavaScript is if you have a regex where you have a global modifier, which means that you want to match all of the capturing groups. Right now, you can't do that with the string prototype match function. Instead, you have to do all these weird workarounds as described here. Essentially, what you want this match to support is returning an array that looks like this with the entire string and the different capturing groups in here. But when you add a global modifier, it only matches the entire regex itself. So match all lets you easily match all regex matches with capturing groups. The thing you should remember is that if you're making a regex and you have capturing groups and you have more than one, match all is your friend. So just remember that. The second proposal that got approved to ES2020 is the dynamic import function. And that's something that you've already probably been using for a while now. Just because something's not yet approved as part of the ECMAScript standard doesn't mean that people use it ahead of time. Uh, you should already know what this is. Essentially, it's a way for you to dynamically import modules into your code. If you use Webpack, that's the way that you do code splitting with the import syntax as well. It looks like this, and maybe you don't know what it is, and I should make a separate video to delve more into it, but I'm going to assume for the case of this video that you do but it's now standardized. So that means that it's not gonna change from underneath our feet, which is lovely. Import.meta is very meta, man. Sorry, I couldn't resist making that joke. 
Essentially, import.meta standardizes and replaces all the magic globals that exist in Node. So for example, this underscore dir name, um, you'd also have an underscore file name. Uh, it's a standard way to get meta information about the module that you're inside of. So the example they have here is if you want to get the file name, where is it? So if you're in a file like mymodule.js, you can actually look at import.meta and you'll have this URL property that shows you the file that you're inside of. So it's good for reflection or any other things you might want to use. It's also potentially a standardized way of Webpack using this instead of magic variables as well. And now it's standard. Big int is a big deal because it lets you star, because it lets you store big numbers. Uh, did you know that JavaScript has a maximum safe integer value? So if you use this, you get this value. If you add one to it, you get 992. If you add two to it, it's the same value because JavaScript just does not support numbers bigger than that. Fun trivia note, Twitter has their IDs, which are very large integers, and they actually ran into this issue, this exact issue a while back, where they were sending down integers from their API response to the client of the Twitter ID, and they were getting to be wrong because there was overflow happening. And this is why now Twitter sends down their IDs as strings, because then it can't be truncated or munged by JavaScript. A big int lets you store big integers. And what's most exciting to me about that is it's actually a new primitive type. If you actually do type of a big int integer, you get big int. Should I prove it to you? So if I do a, if I do type of 100, then maybe you say that something is a big int is by adding an n, there you have big int. So that's how you can make a big integer is by appending dot an n using the constructor, etc. There's more details in the proposal about how you can, how big ints work with numbers. Uh, by and large, they mostly play with each other as you'd expect, just for free. But there's no coercion of a big int to a number or vice versa. You have to be explicitly casting them between the two, which is probably healthier than having this weird, uh, where was it, the coercion where you can do plus uh, gotchas like this. They cannot be converted to numbers using the unary plus. So you can't do this, you have to actually use number. So big ends for all your big number problems. This is another very cool proposal to see included by default, promise that all settled. A lot of user land libraries like Bluebird has had this supported for a while, but now this is added by default. All settled is different than promise.all. So if you have a promise.all and you have an array of promises, as soon as one of those promises rejects, all of the promise, the entire promise that all chain will reject as well. So if you have four promises and one rejects, that means everything's gonna go into the catch block. With all settled, you don't care if those promises are resolved or rejected, you just want them all to not be pending anymore. And once all of them are not pending, then you can go into the finally block, which looks like this. Uh, where is it? Not finally. Here we are. So you can have promise that all settled with all these requests and when once all these API requests, whether they are successful or if they error, you'll be notified of that. And that's great for a lot of UI purposes as well. So very excited to see this be included by default in JavaScript. What is global this? It is a cross environment way of referencing the global object. Uh, before global this existed, you'd have to write this shim like this to make sure that you got the right global object. You're saying is the window undefined? Is process an object? Is require a function? You're trying to just, inside your module, you're trying to sniff out and see, where am I? What is this world? Where's the parent of all my prototypes? Now we have global this, and we don't have to worry about that at all, which means that you can have it'll be easier now to write cross environment friendly code because you can reference global this without any worry about document not existing, window not existing, module not existing. It's just, it's just global this baby. It's just, it's just nice now. Small little thing, but one that would probably be good for the years to come, uh, specifying the four in enumeration order. Try to say that eight times fast. Don't. Uh, 
the proposal left the order in which for in enumerated over values unspecified so that the engines themselves, like V8, Blink, um, WebKit, would do whatever they wanted to do. This actually specifies in the spec itself the order in which you should enumerate over. Great. Another fun little one for mostly import export is adding export star as namespace for a module, just further rounding out the ways which you can write export declarations. So it's nice to have this also included to make you have more flexibility in writing your export statements. And last but not least, my favorite two proposals that I've already have separate videos about because I was so excited about is optional chaining, where you can have a nice little question mark to access values that may or may not exist, and nullish coalescing, where rather than being bit by the bug where you have falsies giving you the wrong value, you can now use nullish coalescing to get the right value. The example they always give, give here is if you were to do this, right? Re a response from an API tells you what the animation duration is. If this was zero, this would actually resolve to 300 because zero is falsy. But that's not what we want. We actually want zero to be the value to be used. And now by using nullish coalescing, you actually get the right behavior. And again, optional chaining is the best thing ever. So that was a sprint through all the new features of ES 2020. Hopefully your vision is looking better now because I like the easy jokes because they don't always come and when they do, they're fun to say. <laughs> and I hope you start using them in your code because these are not added to language just for fun. They're added to make you more productive and more efficient as a programmer. Big int in particular should help with a lot of edge cases that you might not have already been aware about. Optional chaining, knowledge coalescing are so nice. Be careful not to go overboard with optional chaining. It's so easy. And once it's actually not having to go through Babel, because Babel adds a lot of weight to it, it'll be a lot nicer to use. But you have all these new things at your, at your disposal to write really supercharged JavaScript apps nowadays and hopefully you'll take advantage of them. And I think the biggest trick to start using them is just to go out of your way to use it. Like, even when you don't think you need to use it, just use it to get to try it out. Like, just go out of your way to try out these features so that you start getting it into your behavior that these are things that you can actually use in your codes. Hopefully that gets you excited because I'm very excited about this as well. Thank you for watching this video. I am here every week with new videos about coding and the life. Fantastic. Uh, tell your friends, loved ones, and pets. Always the pets. My last name's Wolf. I had that affinity with pets to tell them how to code. What the hell am I talking about? Uh, I'll see you again next week with a brand new video. Stay coded.